I just want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Charlie Gross. I'm the Director of Business Development here with, with Operation 36. Uh, today we've got Kelly Hines. She's a PGA pro out in Hawaii. Uh, Kelly, I'm going to let you do the honors of pronouncing the club name because I feel like I will butcher it. So if you want to <laughs> do, the, do the club name there. All right. Um, I'm at the Ocean Course at Hokuala, and Hoku means star. And ALA is rising. So um, our property going through a lot of changes. So they named it the Rising Star. I like that. Hoku, I like that. Hoku ALA. Awesome. I, that's actually what I was going to say. So I, I would have got it right. I need to have more confidence <laughs> in myself, apparently. Um, but yeah, so I, I know, uh, you know we were obviously talking just now, but you started you know, with the program back in 2021. I think you start with a, a handful of classes and the title of this, uh, this webinar is, you know, starting small and, and scaling up. So um, I'll let you speak to that, you know, once we get towards, towards the Q&A part of this. Uh, but just a little bit about Kelly for everyone that's, that's just joining. Uh, she was a top 50 Operation 36 coach last year, runs a great program out there in Hawaii. She's gone through our certification. So if you've got questions on the program, she's a great resource for you. And, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll kind of have a better idea of if, if it's something that you're looking at starting, you know, how, how you could start smaller and then scale this thing up over time. So without further ado, what I'll do is I'll run, run through just a three to five minute overview of Operation 36 for those of you that aren't as familiar with it. Then we'll uh, go ahead and, and get Kelly uh, to answer any questions that funnel in. And we do have a Q&A feature in Zoom that you can use. Uh, to ask any questions to Kelly uh, that, that you might have. So if anything pops up as, as we're talking, feel free to throw some questions in the chat there and we'll definitely make sure that we get those answered for you. All right, so we'll wrap up right here at 12.30 Eastern time, uh, right, at the, right at the top of that hour. Uh, but just to kind of give everyone an idea of, of what Operation 36 is, if, if you know, uh, if you know, or have looked into Operation 36, you know it's not a, a one-off camp or a one-off clinic or a one-off private lesson. It is a developmental program. Uh, program itself has actually you know, started to be powered by technology here over the last few years. So there is an app behind it now to help power things, uh, you know, manage, manage everything as a, as a coach and communicate with your students, be able to show them they're getting better. And when you bring Operation 36 to your facility, what you're doing is you're providing your beginners with a motivating roadmap of, you know, how to play golf, you know, how to, you know, get involved and, and feel comfortable out there on the golf course. And, you know, as I did say, this is developmental programming and, and the three main cores uh, to, to Operation 36 is, you know, first things first, if you want to be a developmental program, you've got to play golf. And that's what we do with Operation 36 model. But from there, you have to have a coach like Kelly to help you develop your skills. Um, so if your coach can't show you how you're progressing through to keep you motivated, what's going to happen is you'll probably lose interest. You won't stay involved. And that's where the Op36, te Op 36 technology kind of helps make our lives easier as, as coaches. So, you know, instead of having to spend hours upon hours, you know, writing information down or tracking it in an Excel sheet or something like that. That's why the technology was developed. Uh, you know, so again, three cores of Operation 36, playing golf, uh, weekly classes to help develop skills, and then you know, being able to track the progress using the technology um, to, to run the program as a coach. So you know, here's kind of an example of what all that looks like when you put it down on a schedule. Uh, we want you to, to be able to scale this thing at your own pace. So here's an example of you know, what one of your students' schedule might look like. Here we've got an eight week program laid out. Uh, during that eight weeks, we've got eight of those blue dots, four of those green dots. The blue dots signify our classes. Those are about one hour long and we typically recommend running a six to one student to coach ratio. Uh, we do have some pros that do four to one, some that do eight to one. So, you know, there is some wiggle room there. But the goal is, you know, how do we make this much more cost effective for our students and much more efficient for us as coaches? And the, the one thing I do want to point out about those green dots is that those are still extremely important because without the nine hole events, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to retain your golfers as well. We've done a ton of studies over the years. And, you know, the easiest way I've ever heard it put is <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's, you know, would you ever sign up for swimming and never go in the water? And the, the answer is no, right? 
you, you wouldn't do that. You, you get in the water uh, and that's why we prioritize getting students onto the golf course as part of the program. So, you know, when you first start off, uh, you just block a couple tee times as, as the coach, uh, you know, get them out there on the golf course. Every golfer starts closer to the hole. They work their way through the different divisions and you might have a junior that wants to, you know, go out and, uh, play college golf one day, you might have a lady that's in, just intimidated, wants to figure out a way to get out there. And the goal is really simple. You know, they're starting off 25 yards away. They beat 36, they get to back up to 50 yards. And then that process just continues on. And again, every student has different goals, but we can be sure that, you know, because of this playing format, even though that these are beginners, no matter what their goals are, they're going to be able to play at a fast play pace and that that's almost organically happened here over the last few years so you've kind of seen you know what a schedule looks like you know what the nine hole events look like what i wanted to just pull up really quickly before we go a little bit more in depth here is is this screenshot here so you know the the webinar is titled you know start small and grow and that's why i put this graphic up uh, when when we're talking with pros, you know who don't want to be overwhelmed when they're first looking into this program kelly like you were uh, you know, a couple years ago, we speak to this idea of, you know, starting small, but we have this goal for every new, new program, especially if you're starting from scratch, let's get you to 12 golfers. In this example, I even kind of, you know, did a little bit less than that. So we've got a six student example here, you know, and that, that requires one hour of coaching per week. And then the weeks that you're doing those nine hole events, which we recommend every other week, maybe another two, two and a half hours to run the nine hole event. And, and maybe you're looking at this example and thinking, you know, that 30 students, you know, would be the max you could handle. And that's something we also take into account on the front end. It's you know, figuring out how can we help you get the marketing out there that allows you to run the program successfully for your club in your situation. And that's a really, you know, big thing that we focus on in the beginning. So, you know, if you know that the most you can teach is five hours a week, we're going to help you build the marketing behind that. We'll help you figure out how to message everything correctly. So, you know, you can build up a wait list and get people, you know, interested in the program, but also give you time to sit down with us again and plan and figure out how to staff this thing. If you do have a wait list starting to build up, because obviously that's a really good problem to have. So the last point I want to, you know, make here is if you are interested, uh, happy to jump on a call with you. Matt Bartel is here as well. We've also got Jesus Martinez, uh, who who oversees our West Coast these days. Um, and if you wanna see if your club's a fit, we'll send you an email with this recording afterwards and we'll send you a link to our calendars uh, if you, if you wanna um, communicate with us and see if your club might be a fit. But without further ado, I know every, everyone's really here for Kelly. They don't wanna hear me talk. So, you know, Kelly, let's, you know, it's bright and early over there in Hawaii. We really appreciate you, you jumping on this early. So, you know, if you want to just start off by telling us a little bit about how you got involved in Operation 36 and maybe a little bit about your coaching background, we'd love to kind of just hear your story before we open up the Q&A. Okay, well, thank you, Charlie. Um, aloha and good morning, everyone. Uh, so I've been here at the property. This is actually my third time um, at the Ocean Course at Hokuala. Uh, my father was a superintendent out here, so I worked on the course with him. I ended up working in the golf shop. Um, my brother's a golf professional also. Um, so just been around golf uh, my whole life and actually on this property. So born and raised in the beautiful island of Kauai. Um, so I was the head golf professional and here at the Ocean Course. And then they decided to make a couple of changes and they put me into a new role of director of golf instruction. And I was kind of hesitant um in this new role because you know the new technology um I've been in the business for over 40 years ah so anyway so the technology I was a little um a little bit afraid of doing it and once I got um involved with golf lessons more um I just really loved it my brother was actually part of ops 36 and so I asked him about it got on a call with Charlie went to our management company and they said, yes, good to go. And I think what I really love about Ops 36 is it's kind of the same philosophy that I've been teaching is working from the whole backwards. So it really fit my life, uh, my style of teaching and also the curriculum. Um, I have four 
children. Well, now they're all adults, but um, I did homeschooling. So it's kind of the same thing with a curriculum that I'm following and just helping my um, kids get through their homeschooling, even though it's tough to do homeschooling in Hawaii because the ocean is right in the backyard. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of been my journey. So with Ops 36, um, like Charlie said, I started off, I think I had maybe four or five classes. I had maybe 14 students and um, we had so much fun. It was, it was just a blast. And from there, it was just word of mouth. And um, we do live on a small island and the golf community is even smaller. So people just started signing up. Um, I was actually going after the junior golfer and surprisingly, I have more adults than juniors. Um, so it's it's been really, really fun. So learning about them and our community has built up and, you know, we've been in the top I think three, Charlie, in the different um, semesters, you know, with our community online. So I'm really proud of our community because they've come out and participated. And um, we've been in second. I think we even got first out of over 600 courses, I guess. So they really feel good about that. Yeah, that, and what you're talking about is like our our uh, global challenge there in the app, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's I think last year it would have been 600 something. This year we're over 700 something uh, wow. courses. So that's uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool when you've got something like ex external out there that everyone's working towards. It's not, it's you know much bigger than just them and and their individual goals. They are kind of working as a team. So I'm sure that's kind of created a fun environment there. It has the community, um, you know, again, it's a really tight community and they've now they're playing golf with each other, not just, you know, during our time, they're going to the other courses. Um, so the friendships that have been built from Operation 36 is priceless. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's always fun for me to jump on these and, and hear stories uh, just, you know, a, about, you know, how the programs impacted, you know, not only not only you as a pro, but the, the golfers. Right. So, um, you know, that's that's the end goal of this thing. Um, what I wanted <clears throat> what I wanted to just quickly talk about as I'm losing my voice on the on the webinar um, is you kind of start about how you, you talked about how you started small. And I think a, a lot of you know, coaches when they're looking into something like an Operation 36 is maybe another one of the questions racing through their mind is, you know, how am I going to market this thing? How am I going to fill it? So could you maybe talk to, you know, obviously you got about 14 golfers to start. How did you go about marketing everything on the front end? How'd you, how'd you uh, get the word out about the program? Um, well, actually, I talked to a few of the students because they come and play golf. So talking to them one-on-one -on -one and saying, hey, I'm going to start this new program. This is what it's all about. Um, we do have, um, I have a radio ad spot. So oh, cool. we're able to yep, advertise it on our local uh, radio station. And then our membership also, I was able to send an email blast out to about a thousand at that time was maybe about, a, yeah, maybe about a thousand they, we call them our community members. Um, so again, but it was just word of mouth and it was really nice starting small. And one of my grandparents actually mentioned, I had a meeting with them on Tuesday was, it was really nice in the beginning with the small class, because once we got on the golf course, I was able to spend more time with them and help them more on the course. And they really enjoyed that. Um, so from that first class, um, again, it was just really word of mouth and people just started talking about it and then inviting their friends because you have um, in the program, there's one day where you can invite a friend. So bring a friend to class. So we did a couple of those. So those people ended up signing up for the next semester. Um, and yeah, it, it got big pretty fast. <laughs> So it's, it's it's not, fast. 
Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a lot of word of mouth, which is which is um, kind of what what we see once the once the program gets going. Has, has that changed? You know, obviously, this will be, I guess, will this be your third season? I'm trying to do math. Twenty twenty one. I'm yeah. So yeah. I have two students that this will be their eighth semester. Okay. Cool. That make, I, I know we're trying to figure it out, but this is their eighth time they're enrolling. Okay, cool. So, cool. Yeah, and a couple semesters ago, um, I had this uh, woman, she's a hairdresser. Okay. And you know how it is when you go to your hairdresser and they talk story and talk story. And so she was in the program and just from Brittany, I swear she brought, brought about eight people. Wow. wow. Yeah. 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 I, yeah and, I, and it's coupled it's not just the wife it's I had like 10 couples that wanted to learn the game of golf together oh that that's cool so do you have uh like did you have couple specific classes or was it just like hey your adult no program almost organically became couples it sounds like yeah just ended up being all couples my Monday class was all couples that's a cool story <laughs> yeah it's funny because, um, you know, if, if there's pros that have been following us for a long time, when I first started seven years ago, this was just, jun it was a junior program. And uh, we've had pros over the years. Uh, Marvel Barnard is LPGA president. She was one of the first ones that said, hey, I want to run this with adults. We're like, okay, well, you know, we'll pilot it, see if it works, if you want to pilot it. And now we've got, I think, uh, Matt's on here. I'm trying to think. I think there was 35,000 ladies in programs last year or something like that. So it's, it's you know, roughly 40% of our golfers are now adults, right? Um, and, and the majority of those are ladies. So it's been been a cool, uh, a cool roller coaster ride, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. And even the um, young girls too. I've had, I have more um, girl, junior girls coming out. How do you run those classes? You know, and this kind of might speak to like as it scales, right? Um, you might have had a mixture of classes now. Do you do you do girl specific classes or anything like that? Nope. Still, we keep it. We have the boys and the girls. Um, my last semester, my Wednesday class was five girls and one boy, and the boy goes, "Can I get out?" <laughs> <laughs> We moved him to a Thursday class and just so happens I had only, I had three boys in that Thursday class. So Avon came over to that. He was much happier. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. So it just turned out that way. Yeah, we, we've seen it at, you know, the, the academies we run where like the, the girls love being with each other, but you've got like, like my daughter's actually in a program here in, in Raleigh and she ended up in a class with all girls, but there was one boy in there as well. And you could tell he was just like, all right. Uh, you know, I'm having, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having fun, but I'm like, uh, I, it's a little bit too much like uh, for me to handle right now. So he ended up getting moved as well. But um, we've kind of run into that over the years. Um, so speaking of over the years, like from the from the marketing side, it sounds like a lot of wor word of mouth happening. What was your game plan this year, you know, marketing wise versus your first year? Have you done anything different to, to grow the program or get the word out there? Um, no, it's still pretty much the same. We've been advertising on the radio, okay. um, sending the, I got the newsletter part of our, um, we're a true course. And so we do newsletters, um, within our community also. And then the people that have been interested in ops 36. So now they go into your lead and so now I'll send out all them uh, email going, hey, the next semester starting up. Um, please let me know if you'd like to join us. And now with the technology, they can sign up right online. And that's made it a lot easier. Um, last semester, I had my brother helping me because we had 80 golfers. We had 80 students. So it was you know, teaching 14 classes a week, it was, it was like, when's the last class? Let me out. <laughs> uh, but again, it was just, it was a lot of fun. So I had my brother help me um, do some of the classes. So that was, 
great to have that extra um, helping hands and eyes and, you know, that we can divide the class up and help out the students. But this semester, um, I'm only sticking with six students in a class. Um, and so this semester, the enrollment came down a little bit, which is okay. I think it's a blessing in disguise. Um, like I was talking to Charlie before we started this, um, you know, can spend more one-on-one -on -one with the student. If, if it gets past over six students and you don't have an extra helping hand or an assistant, it, it, it doesn't help you as a coach and it doesn't help the student. Um, so again, I'm, I'm just happy. So right now I think I've got, what do I have? I have two, two, four, six, eight. I think just nine classes, nine classes a semester. Cool. Yeah. And so my brother, um, I've given my brother a couple classes and um, I'm starting a new um, coaching program also kind of still using Ops 36 and those students will participate in the nine whole events. So, oh, cool. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited about being a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with those students. That, yeah, and I can tell you're like passionate about the, the coaching side of things too. It, it kind of shines through as you're talking. Um, Matt, Matt Bartell, you, you got your hand up. Do you have a question or comment? Yeah, Kelly, I had a question just about when you started up, um, how many, how many students did you expect? You know, I know you're on a small Island. It's not, there's not a million people on Kauai or, you know, 10 million people. And so I, I get a lot of people in the same scenario where maybe they're kind of in the, in the country or, um, they're not in a high demographic area, but what were you, so what were you expecting? And then how many students did you get? How did you, you know, did you ever expect 80 students to be signed up in your Academy? Can you kind of fill me in on that a little bit? Yeah, so um, after the 14 students and then the word of mouth, and then I had my own little personal goal, you know, okay, well, let's double that for the next semester. Let's keep, you know, pushing it and pushing it. And the semester before this one, um, my goal was to reach, I think it was 60 students. And then we went to 70 students, you know? So every time I would email our management team going, oh my gosh, we're now at 72, we're now at 74, you know? So it's, it's um, I think it's just growing it. And um, um, again, it's because we're such a small island, it's all word of mouth. And so you, um, you got to create that environment, that community. And, you know, we had one student that I'm going to just say it um, more of a Debbie Downer, you know, and, and didn't really embrace this community and um, she didn't sign up for the next semester. And it was okay because you want that energy to just keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and I think that's what's happened with our um, Hokuala community is the people that come in, they just bring this um, excitement, this energy that they want to learn and they want to have fun. And so we create this, um, I guess, a non-threatening environment and, you know, it's okay. You shoot 50 from 25 yards. It's all right. You know, no big deal. Let's go, let's go do it again. Um, so I don't know if that answered the question, Matt. <laughs> Yes, it did. The only the only follow up to that would be: Did you did you have anybody telling you, "Hey, this you're never going to get enough students for this. Like you you're never going to you know ten ten is your max. You don't there there are no juniors or beginners out here." Um. Yeah, I did have one of those uh, people that you know. There's not enough students. How are you gonna How are you gonna How are you gonna fill your classes? And you know, but it's. Um, it's new golfers, right? We're creating new golfers. So it, you're not really getting from the golf environment, just like about Brittany, the hairdresser, those ladies sitting in her seat, they weren't golfers. 
you know, so it's, it's been really fun. So that's why I said it's, it's just this excitement that they bring um, to the class learning, so learning a do, new, learning a new skill. Would you say by offering and having op 36 available that attracted new actual new people to the golf course, then your, your oh, yeah. rounds are up from new people and new experiences. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we're in a business, right? So they want to look, what is Ops 36? Um, what's it impacting our golf course? And so I have a very supportive uh, general manager because I have two of his kids in my class. <laughs> um, very supportive. So what we've done is we, <laughs> we've created um, a Ops 36 profile for all the students. So their member number or community number starts with 36. And so right now we're at 113, I think, um, in our membership, our community for Ops 36. So now we keep track of what they've been spending in the golf shop and food and beverage and you know, so it, it's it's great for me because now I can bring value to the golf course. And, you know, I think, I don't know, of the generation that's on this webinar, but um, when you're in the business for such a long time, you sometimes you lose your passion and um, you don't know what value you bring to your work. And um, Ops 36 have has brought that. Um, for me sorry a little emotional here um you know because like I said it you're I didn't think being a golf instructor was my calling um but it has really changed my world and um you know Charlie showed the impact on being a coach and what you get paid um so with ops 36 I'm able to visit my children in Las Vegas. I have three grandchildren there. I have a daughter in Iowa. I had a daughter in Japan. I have my son here. So now I'm able to travel um, and be debt free. So it's it's given me a, a really different lifestyle. So sorry about that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I need a second too. That, that, <laughs> that's awesome. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, we are we are starting to have some some questions roll in. Um, so we have we've got one person is asking about the nine hole events. It says, "I'm concerned about the time used to walk from hole to hole, which can be very time and energy consuming. You know, distance is estimated to be two thousand yards of walking between holes downtime. So I guess maybe if you could just give feedback on your experience, Kelly, with the nine hole events." Yeah, so um, we used to take carts, and um, actually from Ops 36, I saw something about getting them out and walking, and so I think in my third semester, I said, no more carts, we're walking, and they're all like, what? what? Walking? No way, and what had happened was the camaraderie, um, because it is a long walk, our golf course is not a walking course. Um, we had to skip hole five and six. It's um, through this valley, um, great hole, but through this valley, and there was no way these little ones were going to get walking up and down um, two valleys. So we had to skip number five hole and play number one over again. Um, but with the walking, what happened was now these kids were able to talk communicate with each other and build that friendship. Also, I had a, I got a great picture of parents would come out caddy for their child and holding hand in hand, you know, a mother holding the son's bag and um, um, Trenton, you know, holding his mom's hand as they're walking down the fairway. It's priceless. You know, those memories are, are just priceless. Um, so now we get into like the fourth semester or whatever it is. And now they go, we want to play hole five. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, how are we going to do this? So now I have to get parents to help shuttle 
So then we had a shuttle cart, um, shuttle the golfers, hole five, go down the valley, drop them off, go down six, drop them off, come back around to four. Um, but again, the community, the parents, they saw um, the impact it was making on their child. Um, I have an adult, um, her husband, he comes out every Saturday and shuttles for us every Saturday because he loves it talking again to the students you know and the parents and again it's just this environment that has been created and it is not me it is like I said everybody's energy that has come um so the walking I would I would still push it and and have them walk um and the adults, they got to show me proof that they cannot walk before they get a cart. And they got to pay for the cart now. Before we didn't pay for the cart. Now they got to pay for the cart. And that, I'm guessing that goes to, uh, you know, when they're paying for those carts, that's being tracked by that that member number. So then you can show that yep. impact at the end of the year as well. It it, it was interesting. I, I think uh, you were one of the first coaches that like connected us with Troon. I, I think of uh, Eric, he's out in California and, you know, Steve is down in Florida, but um, I was looking, I think like eight of our top 50 coaches last year were, were Troon, were at Troon courses, which I thought was pretty cool, but it sounds like they, they're giving you a lot of support there at Troon. Yeah. Um, so we've got another question coming in. This is actually from uh, Hey Zeus. He he's here, uh, our director of uh, sales for the West Coast at, at Operation Thirty Six. He says when he's talking with the coaches, they often wonder how to get their academy to the top of that global challenge leaderboard, like you have. Um, so, what strategy did you use to get you know that participation from everybody to to move up that leaderboard together? Um, people are competitive. <laughs> <laughs> People are competitive. They say they're not, but they are competitive. I have my one student, she just wanted to see her name at the top. And so um, every week, uh, you know, on that little um, sandwich board I have out there, who's the app leader? Who's the top app leader for the adults? Who it is for the junior? Um, and then I would break it down and even the class. Um, and again, and you know, it's that technology with Ops 36, it's just so helpful because I know they've used it before um, as an example, you know, where Debbie goes, hey, my daughter Gabby is not doing well. Well, she hasn't been posting anything. She hasn't been training. She, you know, and then here's um, Keikoa is striving and thriving and he's like he's posting everything he's out there training um so you know we just do a little bit of motivation stuff and then when at our awards too um i give out a free round of golf for the top um point getter oh cool for the semester yeah so you've got some little like motivators hanging you know yeah. dangling over the edge for them i like that I like that. Yeah, but we we post a lot. Um, and I think once they get into the habit, then then it's it's easy for them. But it's just kind of training them along. Don't forget, post, 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 post. Let's train. I like it. I like it. Kelly, if I join your academy and start logging points, can I be eligible for that prize, please? <laughs> Absolutely. You can join our community, Matt. All right. <laughs> He's he's got that uh that bucket of money he's saving to get out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, you've told so many good stories. Uh, you mentioned you know when you first pr promoted this thing, you were thinking it was going to be a lot of kids, and you ended up getting some adults. So you know before you 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 know you before you started doing Operation Thirty Six, did you personally like have any reservations about running it with your adults at all? Um, no, not at all. No, okay. because I've been, you know, um, teaching with our Koi Junior Golf. So I've had all the experience with the kids and then a lot of private lessons um, with the adults. So it, it was, it was, it's fun. It's fun. Gotcha. And the main reason I asked that is I've, I'll 
chat with pros sometimes. And I think because, you know, we were a junior program for, for so long before, you know, Marvel and everybody came on and said, Hey, I'm going to do this with adults. We we've had a lot of people that still put us in that category. Right. So, um, you know, that they might think that it, it might not work with the adults, but you, you, obviously it's worked well with you. Uh, it sounds like, you know, the adults have really, uh, really grasped onto the program there. Yeah. And I, again, it's, it's a lot of new golfers, you know, those, that adult is a lot of new, new golfers never, ever played ever. And again, it sounds like just all word of mouth is how they're getting there. Brit Brittany's just cutting people's hair and sending them your way and all sorts of fun yeah. stuff. And now, and now we're getting the juniors parents that are going to participate. So a lot of, um, the kids, their parents are teachers, so they can't do it this year, um, you know, during the school year, but I've got like maybe four going to sign up for summer for the um, the teachers. Oh, that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I was uh, at my buddy's uh, course here in Raleigh a few weeks ago, and one of the dads is in the program with his son. And he his son started out, and the dad's, you know, an engineer, like super smart guy, but never really played sports or golf or anything, and he's loving it. So it was cool to hear that story, too. Um, so sounds oh, like that's fun giving sport. that's fun giving lessons to an engineer <laughs> <laughs> and we held it here where is this oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm I'm sure I, I don't have to deal with that anymore being being over here at headquarters <laughs> on the green grass side but um i remember those days um so we've got a question here from uh chuck de silva he says kelly hi chuck, hi, chuck. <laughs> he, he's saying you're doing great uh, do you do you have to charge your students a greens fee every two weeks? And if so, is it separate or is it included in your fee for Operation 36? Um, so we used to, hi Chuck, good morning. I'll see you tomorrow on our call. Um, we, um, we used to charge them and they would have to check in at the golf shop. And and it was a minimal fee. I think for adults is five dollars, junior is a dollar. And so some students would come in and check in, and some students would just go out to the first hole. They wouldn't check in, but we were trying to um, teach them how to go about checking in at the golf shop, you know, doing all this stuff to get them more comfortable. So when they go play elsewhere. So we missed a lot of um, people that did not pay. So this, so I used to, I used to do an eight week program and we played four weeks. This last semester, I went to six weeks and playing golf three times. And this time I included the green fee in the fee, in the tuition fee. And that way I know who I, I could come back in the golf shop and ring in the group. So I know that we wouldn't miss any revenue, even though that's not a lot of revenue, we wouldn't miss the revenue and everybody would be checked in. So hope that helps Chuck, but I know I'm going to raise my rates after the summer. Kelly, just, I'm writing all this down. So this is great. Um, when you, when you added that greens fee in, did you, so did you increase the, the price of the program accordingly by like that minimal, you know, five, $5, $1 or what? Well, no. So I did $300 for eight weeks. Okay. And then, and then now I'm doing six weeks at still 300. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. So I made a little bit more and I'm still able to pay the golf course. I like that. I like that. Yeah, they were kind of like, what, you know, we're only going to do six weeks, but, you know, Chuck and I are in this amazing program and it's where, you know, you got to take care of yourself. So you're going to put your schedule together and, you know, where do you want to teach? And um, I want to travel this year. So that's why I went to six weeks. I did my schedule for the entire year. So I know when I can travel, I can, you know, make my, like Matt filling up his five gallon jug, you know, make my money, go and spend it, have travel, come back, make my money, go and travel and come back. So 
Awesome. But I'm going to raise the I'm going to raise the rates for probably after the summer. Yeah, it sounds like it's kind of just like been a learning process, or like you're just making small tweaks over time. It sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. And and my little community, they're just so. What's the word? I guess they're accommodating. You know, I'm just going okay. This is what we did this last semester. Okay, now we learned this. Now we're going to go this way and stuff. So, yeah, they're going they're going along with me on this great big wave of Operation Thirty Six. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, we, we keep having questions roll in as you're talking. So people are people are uh, listening. Uh, the next one is, have you ever needed a maximum score on one hole? A maximum score on a hole? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah eight. Is yeah. that what they're asking? Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. It's it was kind of a, a vague question, but I would assume they're asking if there's a max score on a hole. Yeah, so it is it is eight um on a whole so the student can pick up um it's hilarious i've have um these women are cpas and on the scorecard it will you do a check mark for what green you hit and they put down the number and then they add their score they add the number of the green how long how many hits it took on the green uh -huh. So say in the first hole, they did a three, second hole, a two, four, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they add all that up and then they add up their putts. And I'm going, how can you have 25 greens that you hit? We only played nine holes. Oh my gosh. The CPAs are hilarious. It is, but this is what's so fun about these new golfers because it's a whole different perspective. <laughs> you know, on golf that you would never have known because, you know, we've been in the golf business for so long and somebody comes in and they're doing that. Oh, but it's um with the Ops 36, you know, on their scorecard, if you use the template, it says it right on there. It's um the rules, you know, for caddying, um, how to fill out the scorecard. So, it, and we go over it in class also, but yeah <laughs> perfect perfect i couldn't answer that question better i like <laughs> i like the story of the cpas that's great i've got a one of my best friends from college is now a cpa so uh i i don't know my brain doesn't work that way but i i definitely understand all right we've got jim jim few he's saying this is his first year and the majority of his students are adults he'd like to use the pilot program as a base for this year but uh, wonders what tweaks you would recommend. Do you know the adults appreciate the games, or do you use more no nonsense drills when you're teaching the adults? Um, well, with the Ops 36, you know they've come up with a lot of great drills on the training on there, um, and so I've been using what's been working um, and helping the student. Um, and with the adults, again, they're a little bit more competitive um, than the juniors. So what else did he say, Charlie? I'm sorry. It says, um, do the adults- majority older, um, Do the adults appreciate the games? Oh yeah. Yeah, they actually do. Um, but again, with the Ops 36, you know, when you, when you read the curriculum, you ha do have to tweak it for the adults, but, Again, the 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 adults really like the games. You know, there's that base uh, baseball bunker. Um, you know, where you get a hit if you get it out of the green, um, a double if you're on the green, a triple if you're within. I do a flag stick and a home run if you knock it in the hole, and so it's easy for them to visualize it. Um, you know, just getting out of the bunker, right? Because that's our goal is to just get it out of the bunker. Um, so yeah, so you got to tweak it just a little bit. Um, I think we're still all kind of kids at heart and um, we like to play games. I know I am, at least my wife tells me I'm still a kid at heart. So. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think. I've got a list of a ton of questions here that I wanted to ask you too. 
I always, one that I always try and ask on this, we got about 14 minutes left is, you know, what would you say, like, I've heard a lot of like uh, stories over the years or uh, experiences. So like, is there like a memory, like, a, you know, your number one most memorable experience so far as a coach with Operation 36, maybe in a nine hole event or class or something funny that happens or something, you know, that was a cool success story for one of your students that kind of sticks out? Yeah, I'm just going to start crying already. Um, uh oh. <laughs> so one of my students, Kenna, um, she's a junior golfer. So she's been in the program. This is going to be also her eighth time. I have not passed her, though. I think she's on rank, I want to say rank five, because oh, wow. she hasn't, yes, but she hasn't um pass the skill of the yardage from that rank okay and so you know so it's it, again and like you said it's been learning um trying to see what how um, what works for the students but on our last event kenna has been stuck at 100 yards okay so she's joined up when did i do this starting 21 right yep so she's been stuck at 100 yards. Our last event, that was her 31st try at 100 yards. And she passed at shooting 36. She comes running in, and I already know, and she just jumps right on top of me, and we just hold each other. And oh my gosh. It was so emotional, you know, but 31 tries. She didn't give up, but she was so tired from 100 yards that she finally, it clicked where I got to practice, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So she finally, she finally passes 31 tries, you know? So that was it was very emotional. It was, it was, and, and again, the community, I mean, we were just elated, you know, we we're just like, oh my gosh, she did it. She did it. She did it. You know, anyway. So yeah, we she's gotta my get, favorite. We got to get her. I'll, I'll connect you again with Amy after this call. If, if she hasn't been nominated for uh, our one in a million golfer yet that we do on social media, we'll have to get her nominated. Yeah. If you, awesome if you go her. to my landing page mm -hmm. we don't have our golf course as the logo you know our logo is not on our landing page it's actually um i think it was last summer we did that contest mm -hmm. um you know for ops 36 yeah. right for the t-shirt contest drawing contest yeah yeah so kenna so within our community i had everybody vote and so kenna ended up winning so her picture and it's actually this i'm gonna go yeah, i might way. be able to pull this it up right behind now. me she drew she drew that hole and okay. that's that's our logo um on our landing page yeah, i'll try and find it really quick to show everyone what you're talking okay. about should be able to get it up here do, 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 do. But lots of memories, you know, they just, the students, and that's what it's all about, right? Being a golf coach is that success of your student, you know, passing that score. Um, my grandson, same thing. When he finally passed 25 yards, that was huge. <laughs> yep. There's, there it yeah, is. Yeah, so that's, that's our, that's a, Kenna's drawing. So we don't have our logo. We have that. And That's I don't good. know if you can see it, but you can see, oh yeah, you can. You can see the lighthouse that she drew. Oh, you can. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It, these, these stories, you know, are, are why I uh, love coming to work every day, just hearing these yeah. stories. Oh, that was cool. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. We talked about, you know, what this has done for the, the culture of the club, um, trying to look through what, what do you have, you know, what are your plans for, you know, the next year? Like, where do you see Operation 36 taking the club over the next year, you know, as far as, uh, 
you know, growing over the next 12 months? Um, well, definitely, um, hopefully I can get more help and then we can <laughs> offer more, more classes. Um, so with my brother on board, that has helped me out a lot. Um, but again, just being enthusiastic about Operation 36 and the students and making sure their golf journey is a great golf journey and a great experience that they'll continue and continue spreading the word. So probably within the next um, 12 months, I would still love to, you know, get those 80 students. Um, you know, I think 100 would be a great goal um, to get there. Again, if I if I have the help, then you know, then it's possible. Um, it's it's hard to do it um, one person. You know, it's it's like you're running a tournament every week. Um, and I do have help. I have a team mom, um, so she does all my attendance. She she does. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, she breaks everything down for me. So what skill they've done? Did I give them their sticker? Did I, you know, what did they shoot? So everything's in a binder for me. And um, she was in my uh, class for, I think, five semesters. And so I did not charge her um, a tuition, a golf instruction. So, you know, that was compensating her to help me out that that's a that's a cool story and it's funny whenever I have you know some of our, our best coaches on like yourself they've always got somebody that's volunteering as they, as their program's grown so you that's the first time I've heard a team mom but I've yeah, heard of like you know mom. they'll have like a local high school player you know that they'll give free lessons to for helping run the program or a college player or something like that so doesn't necessarily have to be a golf pro that's helping you it sounds like so that's yeah. that's pretty cool yeah uh, and she she's amazing you know she at the at our awards you know she sets up our little golf score our golf store because we give chips our regular poker chips we give chips for the kids once they pass their skills so then they turn they redeem those for um you know just little stuff at their at the golf shop uh, yeah that's awesome yeah, and how how does that go? Uh, how how's that gone for you uh, with the skill point chip store? Like, is is that uh, been going well? Yeah, we actually. I just used. I I found my dad's great little poker chip thing. So he nice. had all these chips in there. So I just used those and stuff. And um, you know, like the red is five points, ten points. I make it. You know, if they do their honor and their mastery, that's worth ten chips. You know, so I want to make sure that, you know, this is important, you know, turn in your paperwork or stuff like that or participate Yeah, in cool. the game and stuff. Yeah, I always, I always felt like those were my daughter, like my daughter's favorite thing was to get a skill point chip. Like I, I thought it would always be the sticker, but she wanted a skill point chip because she knew yeah. at the end of the year that her coach was going to have, you know, the, you know, the little table with a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. Um, Martin would put cool stuff like uh, squirt guns and uh yeah they have emoji, and you know and with, emoji. within right. your community too you know you can always reach out to them and go hey you know I need to get some donations for the kids you know for their little golf shop and stuff and you'll be amazed the parents adults they'll give you all kinds of stuff they'll give you new golf balls that they've had you know and just pens and pencils and anyway it helps fill up your store. I like it. I like it. Well, we're, we're kind of getting close to the, the top of our, you know, one hour time block. So the, the last question I want to leave you with, um, as long as no one else has funneled in a question, let me make sure. I think I have a notification here. Make sure there's no more questions. Oh, that was just Matt messaging me. Okay, so we're good there. The last question I always like asking is, you know, for anyone that that's on the call, for any coach who's looking to grow their golf program, you know, what advice would you give someone if they're looking to, you know, grow their golf program in, in 2023? Um, I think like what we started, you know, start small, um, make sure you read the curriculum, make sure that, you know, being a good coach, um, go through the curriculum yourself, 
Um, so you understand from the student's prospect, um, prospect, I can't say it, oh, from the student side, you, they know, uh, you know what they're going through and stuff. Um, so just going through the curriculum, reading it. Um, so you're prepared. Yeah, I think that's it. Just being prepared. Yeah, that, that always makes your life easier in anything, right? Just, oh, yeah. Um, and I am definitely a wing it person. So being prepared that that <laughs> that whiteboard, you know, and writing it out every week, if it's either after that last class on Saturday and then getting it ready for the following week so you don't have to struggle on Sunday or Monday morning and taking a picture of it and sending it out to the students so they know, okay, this is what's going on for next week. So being prepared, I think, is the best advice. Great advice, simple advice. We'll drop the mic. Um, <laughs> Kelly, th thank you so much. Uh, You're I, I, welcome. You took, you took us on you know, an emotional ride there. That was, uh, <laughs> that, that was fun. Um, it might be the first time I've teared up on a on one of these webinars. So really appreciate you telling your story. And uh, it looks like we might have had somebody. No, nope, no one's raising their hand. But really appreciate you you telling your story uh, and sharing with us and taking time. You know, six thirty six thirty start for you over there in Hawaii. So to get up and and be able to share your story with all these coaches, we really appreciate it. Uh, can't thank you enough. All right, aloha and mahalo. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Have a good one. All right. Aloha, man.